Hello students, this is Mr. C with DHS Chemistry. Today we are going to do a review video on molar mass. Please get out your pencils and paper. Thank you. Shaka bras? <laughs> you thought I was in isolation this whole time. Nah, brah, isolation in the Pacific Ocean. I've just been surfing this whole time. Joke's on you, jabronis. I'm embarrassed. Welcome my fellow chemists, to the secret underground virtual laboratory of DHS. <laughs> Only the most valuable cheddars are emitted. Password. I fear clowns. <laughs> Welcome the DHS Virtual Laboratory. Ha <laughs> Jerry! Cindy! Good work on those stoichiometric problems. <laughs> Beatrice! How are those samples coming along? Ex-girlfriend, still not talking to me. So today, we're gonna be doing a little review on molar mass. So what is molar mass? Remember, molar mass is the mass of one mole of a given element or compound. So let's look at the periodic table of elements here. So we see a bunch of elements. That's cool. Um, and under the element symbol, we see the atomic mass. Well, the atomic mass is the molar mass of an element. So take, for instance, sodium, Na, right there. What that is, and what that means, is if I had one mole of sodium, or Avogadro's number of atoms of sodium, yes, that famous fun number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd represented particles. Right now we're talking about atoms, because we're talking about an element. Well, if I had that one mole, or Avogadro's number, it would weigh 22.990 grams per mole. So maybe you're like, hey, ma, I need one mole of gold or Avogadro's number 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of gold. She'll probably be like, no, get a job. Or maybe she might be like, sure, honey, here is 196.967 grams of gold because the molar mass of gold is 196.967 grams per mole. Booyah. So what about calculating the molar mass for compounds, AKA things with two or more elements. Let's take two examples. How about NaCl, known on the streets as sodium chloride, compared to sucrose, AKA C12, H22, O11. That's the table sugar. So remember how we know it's compound, two or more elements, and we're just counting the capital letters there's two right here that n for sodium na and c for chlorine cl and then over here for sucrose we have three elements c capital c carbon capital h hydrogen and capital o oxygen shibuya okay so calculating the molar mass for the ionic compound nacl sodium chloride well look how there is no small numbers next to the Na or Cl. There's no subscripts, so we can just assume there's one of each, one Na and one Cl. So all we need to do is use our trusty periodic table. Come on. And we look at the molar mass of Na, which is 22.99 grams per mole. And we're going to add that with chlorine's molar mass, which is 35.45 grams per mole. Add that up, and it's 58.44 grams per mole. So you might be like, hey, Ma, I need one mole of sodium chloride on my chicken pot pie. And she's like, honey, no, that's high blood pressure in a bottle right there. So you're like, okay, sorry. 
Okay, so let's look at the next molecular compound, sucrose, which again is C12H22O11. So let's calculate the molar mass for this bad boy. Now, as we see, we do have some small numbers, aka subscripts here. So what those small numbers mean is in one molecule of sucrose, we actually have 12 carbons, 22 hydrogens, and 11 oxygens. So how we calculate this is we find the molar mass of carbon, looking on our trusty periodic table, which is 12.01 grams per mole. Now we're going to multiply that by 12, because there's 12 of them. And then we are going to add that to the molar mass of hydrogen, which is 1.01 grams per mole. But we're going to times that by 22, because there's 22 of them. And we are going to add that to oxygen's molar mass, which is 16.00 grams per mole. And we are going to times that by 11, because there's 11 oxygens in one molecule of sucrose. So we add all that up. And what do we get? 342.30 grams per mole. That is the molar mass, aka what one mole of sucrose weighs is 342.30 grams per mole. So you might be like, hey mom, I need one mole of sucrose on my cherry's jubilee. She'd be like, okay, you're about done now. One more of these questions, you're grounded. All right, all right, let's do one more example. Let's look at another ionic compound. This one is with a metal and a polyatomic ion. Remember those bad boys you get from our sheet? Well, this is calcium nitrate. And how do we calculate the molar mass? Something with parentheses. So looking at this, we can see there is one calcium. There is no subscript next to it. And then we have nitrate, which is NO3, but it's in parentheses with a 2 there because we need two nitrates with a minus one ionic charge to cancel out calcium's plus two ionic charge. So how this works is just like math and distribution. It's really just multiplication with these parentheses. So there is no small number, no subscript next to nitrogen, so there's just one of them. But it's in parentheses with a two next to it. So it's like one times two. So there's two nitrogens in this ionic compound. Same thing with oxygen. There's a subscript three next to it, so there's three oxygens right here, but it's times two. So there's six oxygens in this total ionic compound. So we just use our periodic table. Calcium's molar mass, 40.08 grams per mole, plus nitrogen's, which is 14.01 grams per mole, but there's two of them, right? So times two. And we're adding that to oxygen's molar mass, as we know, 16.00 grams per mole, but it's times six, because there's six oxygens in here. So add those all up, and what do we get? 164.01 grams per mole. Booyah! Okay, here are two example problems. Feel free to pause the video and try now. Thanks for joining us at DHS's virtual laboratory. I hope you learned something today. Okay, remember though, units on all of your numbers. You don't wanna end up like this guy right here. Forgot a few units on his numbers, now he's feeding Capri Suns to seals. Oh boy, what do you think about that lab assistant? <laughs> I know, class A jabroni. Oh yeah, hey. Stay safe out there. Keep your periodic tables on you at all time. Remember, stay out of stage five Cheddar Town. Hey, until next time.